Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Diana. Um, I'm here today to present my work titled On the Feasibility of Wi-Fi Material Sensing, which I've been working on with my collaborators, Jin Sen, Jun Su, and Jun Bo, and my advisor, Sarin. So we're increasingly seeing drones um, enter these new environments, like urban settings to deliver packages and prescriptions, uh, disaster sites for things like finding survivors, as well as warehouses um, to really revolutionize how we're taking inventory. But what these obstacle-rich uh, environments all have are, again, these really heterogeneous obstacles. You might have people, forklifts, uh, skyscrapers, all sorts of different things. So we argue that for drones to work well in these environments, they have to be able to make uh, responses depending on not only where the obstacle is, but also what type of obstacle it is. For example, in a disaster site, um, if a drone senses a tree, maybe it would decide to fly lower. Uh, to prevent getting caught in the branches. In contrast, if there's a hidden human that it can pick up, uh, it might decide to fly higher and around in circles to improve visibility for rescuers. So in addition um, to the sensing requirement, this has to be infrastructure free and contained entirely on the drone, um, because of course in a disaster site we couldn't possibly expect infrastructure to still be around. So what infrastructure free approaches do we have right now? So we have our vision-based solutions like LiDAR, infrared, um, and these can do obstacle type of identification with uh, you know, image processing techniques and so on. We also have what this community has been working on with the RF-based solutions, um, Wi-Fi, radar, backscatter, and so on, which can operate a non-line of sight, um, but we've yet to see these identify materials of objects. So what we need is something in this intersection, and that's what I'm here today to present. So our system's called Intuition, and Intuition is a Wi-Fi sensing system that complements uh, sensors already on board the drone uh, to detect the material of obstacles in both line of sight and non-line of sight. So some advantage of this, advantages of this is that it uses Wi-Fi, which is already present on many drones. Um, it doesn't require any additional infrastructure. And it's not limited to just drones because it is a sensing paradigm. We're able to use it for you know, autonomous vehicles, product testing, and so on. So there's two major parts of the system. And you can see uh, this requires a transmitter and receiver that are both um, on our drone so that it's all on board. Um, so first, our system transmits, and it localizes the coordinates um, of our reflectors. And then the next step is just labeling what kind of reflector that they happen to be. So although there's some interesting um, problems in the localization space, uh, such as how we account for mobility of the drone, for example, um, for the scope of this talk, I'm going to uh, focus on material sensing. So um, our sensing paradigm is inspired by uh, polarimetry, which is a technique that satellites often use, for example, to measure how wet rainforests are. So the way that it works is our system, or a satellite or radar in this case, transmits a vertically polarized signal, so it's all oriented in one direction. It interacts with this a reflector, which it has already done for this tree. Um, and it rotates upon reflection um, by some value that we're going to call alpha. So for simplicity in this talk, we've decided that uh, to just make wood 180, so it's easy to picture. Um, and then it gets reflected back. And this value is different for different types of materials. So when we transmit to a metallic reflector, for example, it might rotate by 90 degrees before it is received back at our reflector. So these different alpha values can be used to distinguish our materials. So how do we bring this to Wi-Fi? Um, again, the first step was transmitting that vertically polarized signal. Thankfully, just a regular monopole antenna is vertically polarized in this propagation pattern. So we're able to transmit that signal. And then it can rotate um, to that alpha value we measured earlier. So because we have multiple signals that we are receiving um, at our Wi-Fi receiver, we separate them spatially with their time of flight. So that's where the localization really plays in. Um, and then we can receive these back um, at our drum. And notice that I pictured here a vertical and a horizontally oriented receiver because we wouldn't be able to pick up the reflection from the vehicle otherwise. But in actual 3D space, of course, we would need an additional third receiver as well. 
So our first challenge is multi-bounce. And to picture what this challenge is, um, imagine that you have a drone that is transmitting in an area with many reflectors. So if it transmits a signal that reflects off of the car and then off of the tree, how do we know that it's um, two reflectors that we've seen before rather than one unknown reflector that might be at a further distance? So the way that we address this is that there's actually a relationship between the reflection that we would receive from a multi-bounce setup and the individual reflectors. So if you can see here, our signal is being transmitted, it's being rotated by the car 90 degrees, and then an additional 180 degrees um, by the tree. This is also commutative, which is, which is nice as well. So even if you rotate the tree first and then the car, we still have that same value. And then we can use this to eliminate those spurious multi-bounce reflections. So again, because they're related, we're able to eliminate them, and there's just some additional details in the paper as well. So another challenge we face is that there are a lot of variations of material, of course. So we have wooden trees, but we also have bookshelves and chairs, and they're all built and shaped very differently and can reflect from a lot of different points. Um, and then, so how do we classify them all as wood? We have the same problem with metallic reflectors. We have cars, we have trash cans with their ridges and fences with their holes. So how can we group them all together as metal? So for this, uh, we devised some machine learning models. So we uh, tested five of them and eventually decided on multilayer perceptrons. And we think it's because they can extract the deeper features that would be um, specific to the material. And this also helps us account for things like location, texture, and so on which we talk about in our paper. So as a final overview, we have our transmitter and receiver atop a drone, um, sending reflection or receiving reflections off of obstacles in the environment. Um, these horizontal and vertically oriented reflections are used to localize. And you can see here they have different powers because of um, the, polarization, uh, the polarization changes. And then we look at these um, reflected signals and the, their power ratios of the trash can and the tree, and we feed that into our classifier. So that finally labels our trash can as aluminum and our tree as birch. So we tested our system um, across a variety of materials and platforms um, atop our drone. We also tried it on a car, on a Roomba. We had some difficulty with that one because it was so close to the ground, it was hard to measure the reflections. Um, some of these carts we rolled around campus, as well as pieces of furniture and infrastructure that I totally didn't just steal from around campus. Um, so I returned them. Um, so we have like chairs, tables, um, filing cabinets, these different like grate and mesh textures, as well as wood sanded to different finishes, 80 grit, 220 grit, roughed up with steel wool, and so on. Finally, we also tested on our friend Joe, who is this ballistic human model here, as well as 10 human volunteers dressed in summer clothing and winter clothing. So our system showed high classification rates across these five classes of materials. Um, so for this test, we were using just sheets of materials. Uh, so we had copper, aluminum, human, plywood, and birch. And you can see that the confusion rates were highest between similar materials like copper and aluminum. We were actually pretty surprised we could distinguish between those two at all. We think it might be because of like either like the rust equivalent of aluminum or copper, just the oxides, or any protective coatings that may have been on their surface. Um, so using the data we got from this, we grouped the copper and aluminum together, and then the wood and the birch together to build a model just to classify between um, metal and wood. And this is what we use to classify real life objects. So we um, classify these again between wood and metal for things like chairs, tables, filing cabinets, a car, and so on. Um, again, we see pretty high accuracy across the board here. We do know that grate is a little lower because it has these like divots that probably confused um, the algorithm with the amount of bounces. So some of the limitations of our system is of course, if a signal is attenuated too much, we can't necessarily pick that up. Um, materials of similar polarization characteristics can be easy to confuse, um, such as copper alu uh, and aluminum, but maybe even more similar uh, metals would be impossible to distinguish. Maybe iron and cobalt, I think they are relatives on the uh, periodic table. 
and they might respond excessively to surface characteristics. So again, we did test with both winter clothing and summer clothing, but of course we couldn't test this space exhaustively. So finally, um, I'm here to present Intuition, which is our system that explores sensing of the material and location of occluded objects. Um, they, it uses commodity radar, or sorry, commodity Wi-Fi radios, and um, has demonstrated promising accuracy in material classification. Um, we want to emphasize again that this isn't just for drones, it's a sensing paradigm that can apply broadly to other areas. And some of the future work that we see in this space um, include trying more types of reflectors, um, onboard processing, and sensor fusion with the uh, cameras and such that are already on board the drone. So thank you for your time, and I'm happy to take any questions.